Hi everyone, my name is Kate from SoftScoop. In this lesson, we are going to take a closer look at importing DWG files into FreeDS Max. The first thing you need to do before importing a file into 3DS Max is to check the unit settings. To do this, go to Customize, Unit Setup, and ensure that the correct units are set both for the system and for display. For example, I work in millimeters, so I leave the settings unchanged. Now, let's move on to the import stage. 3ds Max works well with CAD files. So you can simply drag the file into the program's workspace, click Import, and it'll open with the default import settings. As for the import settings, let's explore them further. I delete this drawing, go to File, Import, select the desired file, and the Import Options window opens, where you can adjust the settings to suit your specific needs. There's an opinion that this is the correct way to import, through the File and Option menu, but that's not entirely true. In fact, if you drag and drop the file into the viewport, the default settings are automatically applied. If you've previously made changes to the import settings, those changes will be saved and applied to future imports, even to a new scene. Let's take a quick look at the main tools. At the top is the Units window. If the imported file was created in a different unit system, you'll need to enable Rescale and select the units you're using, so 3ds Max can display the size correctly. This window also shows the overall size of the drawing. If it's incorrect, you'll need to adjust the units. However, if both the drawing and your scene use the same units, there's no need to enable Rescale. In the next window, you can choose the import method by layers, blocks, materials, color, or a combination of these. This can be useful, but for it to work properly, the drawing must be well organized, with elements correctly placed on their respective layers or categorized properly. Otherwise, the selected method won't work as intended, and the imported elements may become mixed up making it difficult to separate them. In my experience, drawings are rarely perfectly organized, so I usually choose the one object option because it's easier for me to work with. The next three settings also work properly only if the drawing is prepared for this kind of workflow. Here you have options for extruding objects to create walls, for grouping elements, and for separating them by materials. In most cases, it's better to do this manually during the workflow. The next block is geometry options, auto well. Be careful with this when importing architectural drawings, especially if you don't separate objects into categories. Weld may merge elements that shouldn't be combined. However, this option can be very useful when importing logos or infographics, for example. In such cases, merging adjacent points helps create a solid spline. In general, the choice depends on your specific task. Adjust it to what's most convenient for you. Next is Auto Smooth Adjacent Faces. The following option analyzes the normals of adjacent faces and aligns them in the same direction if they're facing different ways. Cap Closed Splines. This applies the extrude modifier to all closed objects and enables the cap start and cap end options. It's a pretty situational feature. The next setting assigns coordinates to textures. I don't recommend enabling this as it can increase the import time and it's better to adjust the shader manually rather than to import it from a DWG. The following two options increase the iteration count for smoothing, one for splines, the other for 3D objects. The next block is responsible for importing additional objects from the drawing, such as XREF files, lights, cameras, and other auxiliary objects. However, depending on the rendering engine, these are unlikely to be useful, even for general orientation, so I usually don't use them. In the Layers tab, you can select which layers to import, including or excluding the necessary ones. And in the Rendering tab, you can define how spline objects will be displayed. The settings here are quite standard, just like in the Editable Spline section, where you can enable Display Mode and adjust the section width. So, to sum it up, I usually just select the One Object option here, and make sure the units match, 
click OK and the drawing is imported. But it's always useful to know the overall functionality and use it when needed. That's all for now, friends. Check out our Patreon where you'll find even more helpful content. Learn easily with Soft School.